when we talk about the early solar system and the protoplanetary disk. We very often also talk about evaporation, condensation and so on. For example, when we look at the bulk composition of chondrites, their element patterns indicate that maybe this might have been established by incomplete condensation of the elements or some partial evaporation. Now, when you look at chondrites, you look at the solids, not at the gas, because the gas is gone. If we could look at the gas, we could test whether this explanation is good, and we would expect that the gas is enriched in volatiles and depleted in refractories. So if you want to test whether this incomplete condensation is a good explanation, we should look at the gas. And we can do this when we look at the gas composition of the interstellar medium, which can be measured um, by astronomers using spectroscopy and telescopes. And the result of these measurements is shown in this plot here. So on the x-axis, there's the temperature, the 50% condensation temperature of the elements decreasing from right to left, which means this is also an increasing volatility. So for example, down to the right here is calcium and titanium, which are highly refractory elements, and on the other side there's cadmium, thallium, highly volatile elements. Now on the y-axis, there's the composition of the gas normalized to solar values and on a log scale. It's a normalized plot. And what we can immediately see here is that um, when you look at, at the gas composition, there's a decrease in abundance towards the refractory elements. So up here are the volatile elements that are enriched to solar in composition in the gas. And the refractory elements down here, they are depleted, clearly depleted, relative to solar values. Now how do we explain this pattern? Most easily, assuming that there are grains that condensed from the interstellar medium gas, and these grains contain all the refractory elements, but also main elements like magnesium silicon, which are also depleted relative to solar values. And these grains then contain maybe oxides, silicates, and so on. Now importantly, there is no difference, or it doesn't make any difference whether the elements um, has a lithophile, a siderophile, or a chalcophile character. This is shown here, indicated by different colors. So independent of this geochemical characteristic, um, all the elements are depleted. So it's not that this depletion pattern is related to whether it's lithophile, siderophile, or so on. It's just volatility controlled. That's all there is. So all the refractory elements, independent of their geochemical characteristic, is depleted from the gas, every refractory element, and most likely in a grain. Now, if we look at the grain, what kind of composition might these grains have? Well, apparently, these grains should be enriched in refractory elements. So these are the grains here. And these are enriched in refractory elements. Then towards more volatile elements, they become more and more depleted, and the pattern looks something like this. And this is exactly the pattern we observe in bulk chondrites. So assuming that bulk chondrites represent an incomplete condensation pattern is a very good idea, is a very good explanation. Which means that looking at the gas composition of the interstellar medium shows us that the bulk chondrite element pattern most likely also is an incomplete condensation pattern. And this is what this diagram about the interstellar medium gas tells us by analogy for the bulk chondrites.